The groovy era brought us some of the most beloved icons, but there's a real story behind the glitz and glamour. Some came from poverty and spent their youth working on the screen. But escapism is what entertainment is all about. So let's escape and reminisce in this trove of Hollywood history. And here's a blast from 1983 past, a stunning Sharon Stone. In the retro photo, we see Bill Bixby in Lou Ferrigno as David Banner and his alter ego, Hulk, from the Incredible Hulk television series. Ferrigno's background as a fitness trainer and bodybuilder made him perfect for the role. Here we see Joan Collins doing Pilates in the 1970s, as she became more well-known for her roles in horror films and as Alexis Colby in Dynasty. Claudia Cardinale gained fame in Europe and the US with her talent and beauty, appearing in acclaimed films and Hollywood movies before returning to European cinema. This is the queen of disco, LaDonna Adrian Gaines, also known as Donna Summer, who achieved five-time Grammy Award winner status and had four number one singles in the United States all within a 12-month period. She was the first artist to have three consecutive double albums reach number one on the United States Billboard 200 chart. Check out the Bionic Woman and Wonder Woman hanging out in Palm Springs back in 1977, two iconic female TV characters from the 70s. Lindsay Wagner and Linda Carter brought their own unique awesomeness to their respective roles. This is Catherine Ross in the role of Elaine, the daughter of Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate back in 1967. Benjamin Braddock, played by Dustin Hoffman, falls for Mrs. Robinson's daughter, Elaine, Ross. This is a still from Sheena and Friends, featuring Tanya Roberts as the Queen of the Jungle back in 1984. Now she's known for her role on that 70s show as Midge Pinciotti. Dan Rowan and Dick Martin hosted Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, a television sketch comedy that ran for 140 episodes from 1968 to 1973, characterized by rapid-fire gags and politically charged sketches. Here we have Pat Priest, the second actress to play Marilyn Munster, who didn't quite fit in with the rest of the gothic clan on Mockingbird Lane. The original Marilyn, played by Barbara Owens, left the show in the middle of the first season, so Pat Priest took over the role. And now, there's talk of a reboot of The Munsters, embracing the modern age. Yvonne Craig, known for her role as Batgirl, had a sporadic acting career after Batman and later became a real estate broker. She passed away in 2015 due to metastatic breast cancer. Look at this early photo of Pamela Anderson, she looks so different and cute. She later became a sex icon and appeared in Playboy magazine multiple times. She also landed roles on popular television shows. The 1968 British animated musical fantasy Yellow Submarine was inspired by the music of the Beatles, who composed and performed the songs for the film. 
Voice actors were brought in to bring the characters to life as the Beatles go on a journey with Captain Fred in his yellow submarine to free Pepelin from the music-hating Blue Meanies. It received widespread acclaim and has been credited with bringing more interest in animation as a serious art form. In 1976, actress Lisa Hartman starred as Tabitha in a spin-off of Bewitched, portraying a young woman working as a television production assistant in Los Angeles, alongside co-star David Ankrum as Tabitha's brother, Adam. Several Bewitched characters appeared as guests on Tabitha, but unfortunately, the show was cancelled after one season. Dark Shadows aired on ABC from June 27, 1966, to April 2, 1971, and featured vampires, ghosts, werewolves, zombies, and witches. Stallone achieved global recognition after writing and starring in the first Rocky movie, leading to the success of subsequent films and the launch of the Rambo franchise. The Benny Hill Show ran from 1955 to 1991 and aired in over 140 countries, featuring slapstick, parody, and mime sketches, as well as double entendre. The show's main supporting cast included Henry McGee, John John Keefe, Nicholas Parsons, Bob Todd, and Jackie Wright. After a decline in ratings, Thames Television cancelled production of the show in 1989. In this photo, we see Paul Lamatt, Cindy Williams, and Ron Howard in a scene from the 1973 film American Graffiti, which received widespread critical acclaim and was nominated for an Academy Award. The Life and Times of Grizzly Adams is a 1974 film inspired by Charles E. Sellier Jr.'s 1972 historical fiction novella. The popularity of the film led to an NBC television series of the same name. Pictured here is Dan Haggerty, as the title character, who was loosely based on California mountain man James Grizzly Adams, 1812-1860. Dolly and the Mandrell Sisters on their variety show, featuring country music and comedy sketches. In this photo, we see the Italian goddess of the 1950s and 1960s, Luigina Gina Lalo Brigida, who was more than just a pretty face and perfect figure. She was also a talented photojournalist and sculptor, making her one of the highest profile European actresses of the era. Photomat was a chain of drive through kiosks for photo development founded in the 1960s, located in shopping center parking lots. At its peak, there were over 4,000 photomats in the 1980s, primarily in suburban areas. You'd spot that distinctive pyramid-shaped gold roof in the middle of a parking lot at a strip mall, and just drive up to drop off your film or pick up your photos. Easy peasy. They offered one-day finishing and sold Kodak brand film and other photography-related products. Credence Clearwater Revival, often referred to as Credence or simply CCR, consisted of frontman John Fogarty, his brother rhythm guitarist Tom Fogarty, bassist Stu Cook, and drummer Doug Clifford. Their style was primarily rock, their sound encompassed an interesting mix of the swamp and blues rock genres. The very peak of their success would have to be between 1969 and 1970, the band performed at 1969's famed Woodstock Festival and released numerous hit songs. 
After four years of consistent chart-topping success, the group disbanded acrimoniously in late 1972. Poor Susan Day, she had an intense romantic interest in her on-screen brother David Cassidy while they worked on the Partridge family together but Cassidy had no interest in her. He said it was because she lacked the slutty aspect of a female that he desired, which is actually more of a compliment. Even worse he described her as the sister he never had. Cassidy admitted, again publicly, that even though he wasn't attracted to her, he eventually gave in and slept with her one time and regretted it immediately. Ouch. The band formed in 1969 but didn't start playing under the name Alabama until 1977. After two of their singles chart success, they were approached with a record deal from RCA Records. Alabama's greatest success was in the 1980s, they had over 27 number one hits, seven multi-platinum albums and received numerous awards. The band's popularity waned slightly in the 1990s but they were still releasing hit singles and still had multi-platinum album sales. In this photo, we see Elvis Presley with his father, Vernon, at home in Memphis on July 4, 1956. Elvis was actually born as a twin, but sadly his identical twin, Jesse Guerin, was stillborn. In this photo, we see Tim Curry and Richard O'Brien in the iconic horror classic The Rocky Horror Picture Show. O'Brien was the one who wrote the musical stage show and then co-wrote the feature film adaptation released in 1975. Initially, it didn't do so well, but as a midnight picture, it grew its own cult following and soon became a cultural phenomenon in both the United States and United Kingdom. The young Frank Zappa, 22 years old, played the bicycle on The Steve Allen Show in 1963, which was the start of his successful career as a musician. During the interview, he charmed the audience by playing the bicycle, and when asked, he humorously replied that he had been playing for about World War II weeks. In The Rockford Files, James Garner made the Pontiac Firebird a character in the show with his driving skills. He stated, car chases and car action were a big part of the series, and I did most of the driving myself. In this photo, we see actors Connie Seleka, William Catt, and Robert Culp in their roles on the series The Greatest American Hero, which aired from 1981 to 1983. Ali McGraw gained attention after winning a Golden Globe for Most Promising Newcomer in 1969 and achieved international fame in the 1970s after her role in Love Story. This photo features the iconic TV duo Lenny and Squiggy, who were the obnoxious neighbors of Laverne and Shirley. David Lander and Michael McKean's characters graced the show from 1976 to 1982. Here we have Gene Wilder and Terry Garr in the 1974 comedy horror film Young Frankenstein, directed by Mel Brooks. The film was a parody of classic horror movies and was a critical and commercial success. American Graffiti, the quintessential coming-of-age comedy, directed and co-written by George Lucas, stars favorites such as Richard Dreyfuss, Ron Howard, Paul Lomat, 
Harrison Ford, Charles Martin Smith, Cindy Williams, Candy Clark, Mackenzie Phillips, Bo Hopkins, and Wolfman Jack. Who remembers the mysterious blonde girl in the car who mouths, I love you, at a traffic stop? The one Dreyfus character Kurt thought of as a goddess. That was none other than Suzanne Summers. The 1977 fantasy film, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger stars Patrick Wayne, Taryn Power, Margaret Whiting, Jane Seymour, and Patrick Troughton. Columbia Pictures released it the same summer as the original Star Wars film, leading to unfavorable comparisons. Despite its flaws, New York Times reviewer Lawrence Van Gelder found it enjoyable. Room 222, a comedic drama series, aired on ABC from 1969 to 1974, focusing on an American history class at the fictional Walt Whitman High School and incorporating themes from the late 1960s and early 1970s. Patty Hansen has been a constant source of inspiration for Keith Richards since they first met at Studio 54. In The Legend of Lizzie Borden, Elizabeth Montgomery portrays the axe-murdering heiress herself, in a historical mystery movie made for television that premiered on American Broadcasting Company on February 10, 1975. Lynn Renee Anderson was a country music legend with numerous chart-topping hits and several prestigious awards, including a Grammy and the first female country artist to win an American Music Award. Their first date was the worst, it ended with him shooting up and passing out. Once their wives kick them out, Felix and Oscar have to adjust to living together in a Park Avenue bachelor pad, leading to some hilarious situations. In her debut film, Jamie Lee Curtis starred as Laurie Strode in John Carpenter's Halloween in 1978, a landmark film in the horror genre that grossed an astounding $70 million worldwide. The Ghost and Mrs. Muir was a television series and a film based on the 1945 novel by R. Dick. Hope Lang stars as Carolyn Muir, a young widowed writer who rents the charming house, Gull Cottage, which is haunted by the ghost of the former owner, played by Edward Mulher. Charles Nelson Riley plays Claymore Gregg, who knows the cottage is haunted and rents it to Mrs. Muir without telling. Do you remember the gruesomes from the Flintstones? It was like the Adams family moved to Bedrock, consisting of married couple Weirdly and Creepella, their son Goblin, Dobby for short, and Uncle Ghastly. They debuted in 1964 during the show's fifth season in an episode titled The Gruesomes. Here we see a young James Garner as the charming gambler Brett Maverick of the Western television series Maverick. The show launched spin-offs, comic books and even a film in 1994. Davy Jones, a member of the band The Monkees, was asked to sing at a school's junior prom by Marsha Brady in 1971 but she encountered difficulties in reaching him. John Denver, 
also known as Henry John Duchendorf Jr., was a successful musician, record producer, actor, and activist who achieved great fame in the 1970s as a solo singer, with hits like Take Me Home, Country Roads, and Rocky Mountain High. Here we have a photo of Mongo riding into town on an ox in the 1974 film Blazing Saddles. This photo features Freddie Prinze and Jack Albertson from the sitcom Chico and the Man, which aired from 1974 to 1978. The show was the first United States television series set in a Mexican-American neighborhood. Tragically, Prinz suffered from major depression and ultimately took his own life in 1977. The bunkers from All in the Family addressed controversial topics like racism, abortion, women's liberation, homosexuality, religion, and impotence. The BGs, consisting of brothers Barry, Robin, and Maurice Gibb, were a popular music group in the late 60s and 70s, known for their own hits as well as writing and producing hits for other major artists. The Great Grape Ape Show aired on ABC from September 6, 1975 to September 3, 1978, featuring a 40-foot-tall purple gorilla with the mind of a child, and his buddy, a dog named Beagle Beagle. This photo depicts Sammy Davis Jr. in the ring with Muhammad Ali during a benefit fight and show at the Olympic Auditorium in Los Angeles on May 8, 1978. Rod Taylor starred in the 1960 sci-fi film, The Time Machine, based on the 1895 novella by H. G. Wells. The film was influential in the development of the science fiction genre and won an Academy Award for its time-lapse photographic effects. The show featured Rock Hudson and Susan St. James in the title roles, as San Francisco Police Commissioner Stuart McMillan and his amateur detective wife Sally, often solving baffling robberies and murders. Here is Gunnar Hansen in his role as Leatherface in the 1974 horror classic The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a film inspired by real events and the character of Leatherface was based on the real-life murder Ed Gain. In this photo, we see actor John Schneider and actress Lydia Cornell, known for their roles in The Dukes of Hazard and Too Close for Comfort. Schneider played Beauregard, Bo Duke, while Cornell portrayed Sarah Rush. The theme song, Movin' On, was written and performed by Merle Haggard and became a number one single on the Billboard Hot Country Singles chart back in July 1975. In an episode of The Flintstones, Samantha Stevens and Darren Stevens guest star and end up besting the men at every turn with Samantha's witchcraft. The Sweet Ride, 1968, stars Tony Franciosa, Michael Sarazen and Jacqueline Bissett in an early starring role. Sarazen and Bissett were nominated for the Golden Globe Award for Most Promising Newcomer, Male and Female respectively. And the two also embarked on an off-screen romance after spending so much time together on screen. 
Bissett has had lengthy romances, not only with Sarazen, but also with dancer-slash-actor Alexander Godunov, Swiss actor Vincent Perez and Turkish martial arts instructor Emin Bazti, she's never married. She's often made claims of feeling as though she couldn't commit to a man's bad habits and she used to feel claustrophobic. Like many people who don't easily commit, I think I had a fear of being known, I was not sure there was anybody inside there.